They're gonna kill the love of my life. Casey! If I don't go back to what I was doing. Our line of work is quite brutal and quite ruthless. How far would you go for love? You steal truck, bring it to me. Then you make your money. Is it dangerous? Of course it's dangerous! Nicholas Holt, Felicity Jones, with Ben Kingsley and Anthony Hopkins. All this trouble, all this pain, for love. Collide, now playing. Rated PG-13, may be inappropriate for children under 13. Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. You've reached Venus Unplugged, the virtual heartbreak hotel. This is your host, Lorraine Neidhart. Uh, people have been emailing me, which I, I love. I've been able to answer some questions. Uh, if you want to download these episodes, either sign up on Blog Talk Radio and they will send you a notice and an episode, or go to my website, LorraineNightheart.com, and click on the Blog Talk Radio, and you'll get right into the episodes. So there we have that. And uh, to reach me, I'm at 212-757-8914. So what's today going to be all about? Well, in case you haven't noticed, there is a lot of suffering going on, real deep suffering, loss and death, and uh, just heart, earthy woundedness. And I've been thinking about that. Now, of course, for those of you that are into astrology, it, it's this, this Saturn in, in Scorpio is evoking tremendous change. Um, and I had a intuitive flash as I was reflecting on this the amount of suffering it's like everywhere no one's being untouched it's like what is really going on here and then it, it, it hit me it was like oh wait a second we're being the royal way you know everyone who's listening that's the way uh, we're being not even called, we're being kind of drop kicked, demanded to perceive our lives and our wounds and the capacity of our hearts and the capacity of wisdom. They're being broken open and moved forth and we are being given examples in life that we have no answers for. And you know the ego loves answers. Once you think you got the answer, you stop struggling and that's dangerous. Because if we think we understand, we stop. And this period of time, uh, we are really, really being asked to look, to perceive what do we think, what do we feel, where are we concretized, meaning we become stone. No, that's true. Now, you know, I, I work in, partly in the, in the language of Carl Jung, and of course one of the most important teachings of the philosophy of Jung, is uh, the opposites. That when we can work with the tension of the opposites, we have to find out the opposite. And that's very often why somebody or something will come into our life which is completely opposite of what we believe or think and start to, like the sand in the oyster, aggravate us, hopefully, into growth. So when an opposite comes into our life, like recently, there's been a lot of life and death experiences. Something is in your life, or someone is in your life, or a beloved animal, in my case, is in my life, and suddenly is not on the physical plane anymore. And the anguish of that. But after the, the grief, which is the alchemical uh, container, when we're in this grief and this suffering, and the suffering is because we we don't know or we you know they're not there or and we, which means we we have to stretch like what do I believe you know where did they go what's happening um, so that's so much part of what humanity is being called forth to perceive it from the experience from another level. And then I remembered this marvelous story I heard 
which I cannot give full justice to it because it's a it, it, it's such a profound story, but I'm just going to do some para, paraphrasing on this. And it's about Kadar, the green angel, and Moses. Now, the green angel, <clears throat> there's three great angels that live upon the earth. Uh, you'll never know who they are because they just, they kind of like show up. And uh, this particular one, Moses sought because he wanted to have understanding of divine wisdom see there are levels to wisdom we can understand something by the letter of the law well it says it right here you know it says it in the book whether the book be the dictionary or the bible okay here's the book uh but divine wisdom is is through the experience and knowledge is is and yet another level so you know throughout our whole lives hopefully we uh, will look at uh, many interpretations, be able to tolerate something that seems so opposite, uh, like the difference between love and power, you know, what is really going on here. And in that way, that this builds in our heart, in our mind, in our being, in our energy field, the capacity to perceive beyond what is obvious. And that's what happens in spirituality. On one level, you know, metaphysics, spirituality, psychology, you know, there, there are laws. And we follow the laws and we get a hint. But then what happens when all laws are broken or the laws don't work in our favor? Okay. And for instance, uh, someone who you believe, um, I don't know, owes you their life, should be there for you no matter what, uh, and they cannot be because their life takes something over, but you've got a projection onto them that's like, well, they should be here during my sorrow. But it's set up, fate sets it up, that you need to be alone in that sorrow because that's your PhD, that's your exercise. That's, let's see you apply what you say you know because if we apply what we say we know, you'll be able to get out of hell. Well, people, you know, and we very often children will do this to their parents. Well, they should know. They're not gods. They're just people. Some a little better than others, but look to yourself. Look to the divinity within yourself. Find out your own answer. Figure out your way. So, and this is so much of what we're facing right now. Scorpio is really, like, turning the rock so this story uh is about moses who goes searching for kadar which i'm probably saying that wrong uh, the green angel who is a prophet of wisdom the teacher of teachers and he was moses teacher okay so moses uh get, gets wind okay of this great being and Moses has some questions and wants to find him so Moses goes and takes a trip with his servant and uh, they meet where the white Nile and the black Nile meet <clears throat> and Moses uh, meets Qadar and and Moses says to him may I accompany you so that you may teach me also the wisdom which has been taught to you and he answers, you cannot bear with me and you cannot have the patience with regard to the matter of which you have no knowledge. That's huge. All right. And then Moses says, well, if, if God wills, uh, you will find me patient. And if I uh, will not disobey you in any matter... And then the green angel says, well, if you want to accompany me, you should ask me no questions about anything until I myself mention it to you. And this is yet another level. So often people will ask uh, questions when, and they don't even understand anything, but they want to know the answer. It's like, well, why don't you read the text or... Why don't you finish the course or why don't you really observe this and see what's going on before you ask questions? Or they will argue uh, whatever answer you give. And, and 
But you're clueless. What's with the arguing? Because it's grasping for intellectual knowledge. I don't understand it, therefore that's wrong. Well, if you don't understand it, sit with it and work with it. In the ancient schools, esoteric schools, you were not allowed to ask a question for three years from, from your teachers. Because the question uh, is, is more important than the answer. When you know how to formulate a question, the answer is so different. So Moses goes along with the green angel, and, um, and then the story begins, right? And uh, so the green angel, he bores a hole in the boat. So they proceed on until they boarded a boat. And that person uh, bore a hole in the boat. And then Moses cries out, what? What have you done? Have you bored a, a hole so that the passengers may drown? This is grievous thing to do. What have you done? And the green angel answers, didn't I tell you that you would not be able to bear me with patience? And then Moses replied, please do not rebuke me uh, for my, uh, and he asked for forgiveness, and do not take me to task in regard to my conduct. Then they move on, okay? Then they journey until they meet a boy, and that person slew him. The green angel slew the boy. What's that about? And then Moses cries out, you have killed an innocent person, though he had not killed uh, anybody? Surely this is horrible deed that you have commanded. And the green angel replies, didn't I tell you that you would not be able to bear me with patience? Moses once again asks for forgiveness. If after this I ask anything of you, you may not let me accompany you. Well, now I have afforded with you an excuse for myself. Then the third event happens. They continue to travel, and they travel, and until they reached a certain place and requested of its inhabitants to give them some food, but they declined to entertain them. And then, then Moses and the green angel, they saw this wall, was about to fall down and the person set it up again and Moses says had you wanted you could have demanded for your labor and the green angel says that will not do we must now part company so what's all this about and in some way this can be you know the divine aspect of you that knows and can see a greater perception the outcome that when the lesson is learned, okay, but we can't learn it when we're in the middle of it. It takes time and knowledge and experience. And we usually all do the wrong thing in our effort to stop the pain or to understand. And then the green angel explains to the prophet Moses, who could not keep patience, why he did what he did, what he was acting upon, a kind of higher order, right? And the green angel tells him, as regards to the boat, it belonged to a few poor persons who toiled on the river. And the green angel in intended uh, to damage it because further on there was a territory of a king who forcibly seized every boat. But this angel saw danger that these poor and trustworthy people and hardworking people are going to happen. So he, he sinks the boat to protect it from being stolen or taken over. Then in the second incident of the killing of the boy, he explains, as for the boy, his parents were true believers, and we feared lest he should trouble them with his rebellion and unbelief. Therefore, we wish that, and instead, their Lord may grant them another child who may be more righteous and final. So, you know, the green angel saw the kid was going to be a psychopath, 
okay? And, and they took him out because of what would have happened to the parents who were great believers and this kid could have grown up to be a killer and that would have broken the parents' heart. So because the angel could see this, the greater part of wisdom was to remove the child from the earth so that it could return and rethink its incarnation and then come back. And then the third, as regards to the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys who resided in that city. And a treasure for them laid under the wall. And as their father was a righteous man, God willed that when those children attained their maturity, they should dig out their treasure. So, you know, the green angel did not repair the wall. He let it collapse because he knew in the future these children would find their rightful inheritance. So right there, you know, this is, a, a, as I said, I cannot give this um, the true justice and profound um, analysis that this teaching is about, okay? But this is what happens in life. Events take place. They are always to protect us or have us grow or to see. But we can't see that in that moment. Some people stay stuck at the moment of trauma, blame the whole world. Why didn't you save me? Uh, you're not allowed. You can, you can help somebody. You can hold something. But, you know, what's ever up for them is truly up for them. You can witness and know that the divinity in them, the wisdom in them, will grow in time. Which is so much of what is happening now. I don't know one person who isn't under and within the influence of great sorrow. Beyond their comprehension. And that's what creates so much of the sorrow. And then they start to make up a, a tale of, you know victimization or a tale of uh, nobody loves me or, uh, you know, wh whatever it is. And it's like, could you just have the patience? Meaning, could you contain this long enough until understanding comes? Because usually the first question is, why me? I'm such a good person, why me? And it's not about being good or not being good. It's, it's about learning and discovering. And that's so much of what we need right now, is being able to tolerate this great suffering that does not seem to have rhyme or reason. And yet it does. What I suspect is that the whole world right now is being given an opportunity to grow and expand and become wise beyond any other opportunity that we've had in centuries. I think that's how big it is of what's going on. And we need to start to understand this. To grow past our ignorance. Ignorance meaning that which we ignore. And very often, you know, most people ignore their own shadow. They want somebody else to wear it. Instead of going, wait a second, where's, where's my shadow? What am I disowning? And very often, we disown the golden part of us because we're addicted to victimization or we're addicted to, uh, um, you know, why me? Instead of, wow, you know, there's, there's something profound. I'm in the midst of a great mystery. So... If we could just hold right now, not be so determined to get the answer or what is the lesson, but just say I have to sit in this, you know, swamplands of the soul and cook, which is what alchemy is about. We don't try to jump out or save ourselves or understand. We cook, we suffer. We suffer deeply, we grieve deeply, because there is gold in that. And we, you can't even, when you're grieving, you can't even think about gold. You just need to be in this process. Because we need, we need to begin to understand 
you know, when we become victims of misunderstanding because we do not comprehend the wisdom behind it. And there is always wisdom behind it. And if you could just hold on to that, that you're in a great mystery that contains wisdom, and by being able to hold what seems opposite, then, let's say union and abandonment, uh, by holding that, something will be revealed. A little insight or hint will tell us, will guide us, or someone will be sent to tell you a story. See, because to unravel a wisdom behind the mysteries of life and love that we're given by God, uh, we need to have the the patience and the right attitude. And sometimes the attitude is, I haven't earned the right to know. I haven't earned the right to get out of the suffering. Because we're always given exactly, that's the astounding thing, exactly uh, what we need and, and not, nothing too much, nothing too little. You know, that we can have in great suffering. It's like, wow, I must have some serious potential. They're dropping this shit on my head. Okay, all right. You know, that's where we put our trust. Because we want to go for the wisdom in the center of the mystery. And certainly, all issues of love have great mystery. And great levels of consciousness. So if we could just take that attitude because this is also a, a story I know this story was told in answer to the questions of the disbeliever it was used to impress two very important truths on the minds of both disbelievers and the believers in this those people who draw from their conclusions all right what well, seems to be all of us particularly now so those people who draw their conclusions only from seeing aspects of events make a very serious error in their deductions. I just want to say that again. Those who draw their conclusions only from the seeming aspects of events make a very serious error in their deductions. For they only see what is apparent, apparent and they do not go deep into the divine wisdom that underlies them. So when people, you know, see, we see every day the prosperity of the tyrants and the afflictions of the innocent people and the adversary of the virtuous people and they get involved in mental conflicts and they become victims of misunderstanding because they do not comprehend the wisdom behind the disbelievers and the tyrants conclude that uh, that this is the world is functioning without any moral laws and has no sovereignty. And if there is one, he must be senseless. So, like, you know, where's God? Let's blame it on God. Okay, like an answer to Job. Uh, and that the divine must be senseless and unjust. Therefore, one may do whatever one desires, for there is none to whom one shall be accountable. Whoops, people. No, there is always accountability. Remember, we get to do free will. And that is a, an important question. But we're not going to get the answer unless we have the patience to tolerate this conflict. And then we get an insight. Or on the other hand, when the believers uh, see those things, they become so frustrated and disheartened uh, sometimes their faith uh, are put to the very hard trial. But it was to unravel the wisdom behind the mystery that God slightly lifted the curtain of reality. Okay. So that Moses could see the wisdom behind the events that are happening day and night and how their seeing aspect is quite different from the reality. So I guarantee you, 
there is great wisdom, incomprehensible wisdom for most, behind what looks like lawlessness, uh, because there are laws, there are, and there are many levels of laws, and wisdom is a law unto itself, but we need to have the proper relationship with it, proper etiquette. Once again, if you look at the uh, the the poet, you know it's it's like ask the question, and maybe in time you will grow to live the answer. Huge wisdom in that. I'm going to ask this question, but in truth, I can't handle this. This is too much. I want my Nice, limited reality. I want to read one sentence and feel good and think I know everything. I mean, I love all these uh, little statements that are going around, but that's not the answer. That's the bandage. There's no deep answer to it. And we read and go like, yeah, okay, cool. What comes around goes around. Not true. Karma is a complexity, a profound complexity. So people want to shorten it, but that, but... Okay, you could say that, but there's no wisdom in it. Because if you understood the laws of karma and studied them deeply, profoundly, meditated on them, worked with them, you would see that, you know, what goes around comes around. What people are essentially saying, paraphrasing, is like, you know, you'll get yours. Now, that's true, because there is law. But very often people will say that uh, just as kind of as a, as a scary warning or justification, or like, well, you'll suffer one day too. They, they don't understand the profundity of, uh, of karma and cause and effect. Or like the statement that the sins of the father will fall upon the children. Okay, what that means in, in the law of karma is um, that within four generations you will reincarnate and you will balance those uh, misunderstandings or those the breaking of the law or whatever it might be. So in a sense, you become your own great-great-grandparent, which is kind of trippy when you think about that. It's like, whoa, man, how does that work? That's kind of astounding. Now, on a psychological level, so often the child lives the unlived life of the parent, which is why we're working on consciousness. No, you go live your life. Otherwise, you burden your children. It's what you didn't do for yourself. Well, I couldn't do that because I was busy, you know, putting you through college. Yeah, but you, no, you still have that responsibility to, you know, go play the banjo if that's the thing that you wanted to do. So when we when we start to look at, at the profundity and how, what's going on, and this period of time, we are under these great teachings, these great possibilities that will be able to hold this kind of wisdom. That's the hidden promise here. If we study and we are patient, and patient means, okay, we observe, not popping up, what does this mean, what does that mean, what does this mean, what, just like... Wow, look at how this works. What's going on? Uh, there's another thing I would love to share with you. Uh, it's a book called All the World an Icon. And it's the work of Henry Corbin, C-O-R-B-I-N. And it's Henry, Cor Henry, Henry Corbin and the Angelic Function of Beings. So Henry Corbin was a contemporary of Jung. Uh, and he has a completely different take. So it's good to disrupt your cherished beliefs. Uh, because there is always its opposite. Um, you know, so, some days what I do is I just do everything opposite of what I normally do. I'll have my breakfast in the morning. I mean, I'll have my dinner in the morning, and uh, whatever my, my, my daily ritual is, I, I shake it up just to see how addicted I am or what I believe to be true. Because I'm in a trance, as we all are, and how can I be perceiving anything new or profound if I'm doing the same old, same old? So that can be your heart task. Shake up your world. Do something opposite. 
read something that opposes your cherished beliefs with love and respect and get an insight. So the work of, of Henry Corbin is all about, you know, the, the angels, this green angel is an angel of earth, and this, this, it's a whole different uh, cosmology on, on angels and their mystical reality of this earth. Yes, we all have our cherished beliefs. We need to shake them up because the opposite is true also. All right, so that's what's going on. We've all been invited to become wise. Do our homework and talk to you next week. Go to the website, LorraineNightHeart.com, and let the world know what's going on here. So I hope this shook you up a little bit in the best of ways. Take care. Bye. Progressive brings you Flowetry with Flow. When Flow flows, she flows in the know. Mind ruminates. The rape. Shown them all, I heed the call. Seeing the rest, I choose the best. Sometimes it's ours, sometimes it's not. When the fox walks, is it called a fox trot? That's a real question. Compare progressive direct rates with competitors rates. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy.